Hey guys, this is Diego Gonzalez from MindlessPaint.com and uh, today I want to teach you how to paint a custom steel metal panel for automotive cars. So uh, let's uh, start the channel and get going. All right. What you want to start by doing is getting some uh, pre-clean. You can find this at a local automotive store, AutoZone, any kind of automotive shop and scuff down the area. You want to get a clean cloth. What I use is just like a, a t-shirt, a new one. But you can use like more likely a microfiber cloth. Those work really good. What this does is it's actually, it, it goes on wet, but it evaporates super fast. So that's nice. So you can clean the spots and actually see what parts you're doing. So once you do that, I recommend getting a scuff pad. Um, I, I use this rather than sandpaper because what this does is make tiny abrasions on it and doesn't make it too deep. So when you paint it over and clear it, you won't see those uh, thick grooves in it. There's red ones and there's also gray ones. Some are coarser than others. So you have to kind of check it out and see which ones work better for you. So what I'm doing is scuffing down <clears throat> the gloss area. It's not getting into the paint. What this is, does is just getting into the clear coat. scuffing down that clear and it you want to make sure that it's not glossy so when you look at it it's non-reflective it's a dull matte matte color a matte sheen to it and the best way is checking that is flipping it like this and looking at it under the light so you can flip it and see right here it's still glossy but right in the middle not so much so a nice tip I learned was Getting down like this, level, like that, and looking at it at an eye level to see where you need to paint. So I'm gonna finish scuffing this and then I'm gonna start painting. I did a scuff it again, and I did little circles. Um, you can either go straight up and down or do little circles. I like to do little circles because it makes sure it gets all the areas and then it interlocks with all the other areas. So that's very important to me. So it gets an even, flat, um, surface when you do that and what it does is leave little dust particles so then you wipe it over again with pre-clean and that gets all the contaminants off there and when i was a beginning artist i didn't know that your fingers have oils in them so whenever you touch it the oil comes off your fingers because we produce oil in our body and goes on to here so that's important because when you paint it the paint doesn't lay correctly and perfectly flat and when you clear coat it you touch these parts so if you have problems clearing something and you didn't properly prep it, then it'll bubble up, it'll warp, and things like that. So that's also a very good tip of something you need to do and why it's so important to prepare it and prep it properly. So now I'll move on to the next step. What I'm gonna do is lay down a base coat because I'm painting a portrait on here. So I'm gonna lay a base coat of white on here and then I'll start the portrait. Do right here is start painting the portrait in very soft layers of like a light gray. Start painting the mustache, his mouth, the lips, and his cheeks. I keep everything really light right now. I really don't want to overpower the painting with a lot of dominant dark colors, the shades and values of uh, black and gray and white. Fill in his eyes, and then his glasses and go back down again. So I try to move around the painting a lot to establish the overall tone. And if you notice, I had a couple dark spots by his eyes and nose just to give me reference of what the darkest darks are and the blackest blacks. That helps me see the colors around it and how dark I should make the other colors relative to the blackest blacks. 
So I go back over these again and refine it. Do part of his glasses right there, the goggles above his head. And those are really dark, so I can really test my paint and make sure it's uh, dark enough for the rest of the face. Then I do the helmet part and add some texture, some back and forth swipes, and then some little dot dashes for the helmet top. Underneath I'm throwing the shadows and then I'm moving back to the face again. If you notice I'm moving the picture around so it's close to my eye so it can see the, the reference better. And I also blew it up so that's really important. I use a little mask right here to get a sharp edge of the uh, side of the face. I use, just tore off a piece of paper and use it as a mask. I use like a little stencil to make the roundness of the glasses. A little curve edge of the glasses. Then I come back and do a little bit of eyebrow shading, a little short dagger strokes that makes really good eyelashes, eyebrows, everything like that. Step back and then I add some more texture and color to the mustache. I'm always kind of weary when doing a black and white painting uh, of overdoing it on the face, so I really pay attention to the dark colors first. You can never really mess up the dark colors, you can always come back, um, but if you go too dark in the face, it's hard to bring back. So I'm doing the goggles, doing the eyes. I'm using my cell phone too. So that's a really good idea if you want to get really high detail. You can pinch zoom your cell phone in super high quality uh, clarity. You can use the iPad and stuff like that too, but it's easy for me to draw with the cell phone and then I practice a lot like that with one hand. I'm doing the shadows underneath his eyes and also underneath his nose. I got my glasses on right here because I can see sharper with my glasses and my contacts. Underneath his mouth. So I'm able to see the really subtle details by working from my phone. And I really like that than having a printed photograph. Finished work. It's uh, Louis Chevrolet. He was one of the co-founders of Chevrolet. So I painted it for a really cool guy. And uh, he gave me a piece and let me work in his car for him, for uh, his uh, auto club. And he does a lot of car shows. It's really awesome. So if you like my work, um, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Um, helps me get my work out there and, and supports the arts. And uh, if you want to know anything else, drop a comment. Let me know what you think. Um, let me know uh, what other stuff you want me to paint, and I'll show it and do those tutorials too. All right, guys. Thank you. Bye.